Hey, this is Jeremy from the Mountain Shop in Portland, Oregon. Uh, today we're going to talk about what's in my pack to climb uh, Mount Hood. And this is also going to apply to any non-glaciated uh, climbs that can be done in a single day. So most importantly, we're not going to be talking about any ropes or any uh, camping or overnight gear. Also, I want to give the caveat that this is not a complete guide to climbing Mount Hood. This is just going to focus on the gear. Uh, if you want some more information, we're going to put some links in the description of some good sources that you can check out. Alright, so we're going to start off with the cool things, which is the climbing gear. So first off, you need an ice axe. Um, this is a camp course in nanotech, uh, the previous version, not the newest one. Uh, this is my personal axe. I've had it for a couple of years now. like a lot. It's uber lightweight, very functional. Very nice. And uh, for climbing on Mount Hood, a second ice axe or ice tool can be really helpful um, through some steeper sections such as the pearly gates, especially if you aren't too familiar with uh, steep ice axe and crampon technique. Being able to use an axe and a tool just gives you two things to hold on to. It's a lot easier and more secure for the climbing parts. Next up, we're going to have our crampons. These ones are from Petzl. So these are the Urbis hybrids. So it's got steel toe with an aluminum heel. I like these because they're really, really light, uh, packed on super small, and they're really functional. Is they'll climb ice pretty darn well for being so light, um, but they're pretty great. And a quick note on crampon choice is you just have to find what works for you. Um, these work well for me, and I've used them a lot on Mount Hood, but they might not work well for uh, some other folks, especially if you're used to something a little bit beefier, burlier, like a full steel crampon. Uh, rounding out the climbing gear, you're gonna need a helmet, uh, especially the code once the sun hits the south side, a lot of rime starts falling off on you, and you need something to protect your head. This is the Petzl Sirocco. It's a great helmet. It's so light that you can barely even notice when it's on your head. Uh, it's got attachments for headlamps or uh, ski goggles as well. So it works really nicely. Next up, we're uh, talking about Avi tools. So that's going to be a shovel, probe, and a beacon transceiver. Um, so especially if you're climbing hood early in the season, say like February or so, the snowpack can be a lot more temperamental and it's a critical gear to have. As you get more into the spring, summer, I would say just based on talking to folks, a lot of people go up without Avi tools. Um, I think they're good to have. You can get some real lightweight stuff that works really nicely, and it just gives you an extra measure of security if something were to slide. So I definitely recommend bringing it. So I've got two main things in my pack for emergency gear. Uh, this is my first aid kit. It's got an emergency bivy in here, as well as gauze, tape, elastic bandage, gloves, uh, so it's enough that I need to stop bleeding, uh, spend a night out, or splint a, uh, a bo broken bone. Alright, the other piece of emergency gear I like to carry is the Garmin InReach. Uh, this is great because you can text and communicate with, it, with people back in town. Um, you can also call for a rescue. Is If something were to go wrong, uh, the biggest thing that can save life is getting someone out quickly. So being able to communicate both your location and being able to talk to rescuers is huge. I also like to bring uh, a trekking pole. I'll bring generally just one um, because it's lighter and easier to deal with than two. I like folding Z poles because they pack down super small, um, but it's really nice. You can get a lot of stability and efficiency, especially on the lower slopes. And when you get starts getting a little steeper, you use one pole and one ice ax. And then when it gets real steep, this goes in the pack and you break out your tool. So some miscellaneous items. Uh, I like to bring some ski straps, useful for all your strapping needs. Um, largely it's going to be if you're skiing, you can strap your skis to your pack. Headlamp, also quite important. This is a black diamond spotlight. Nice lightweight, it's not super bright, but you don't really need it to be super bright. Um, if you're getting an alpine start, you're gonna be in the dark for a couple of hours, and there's not a whole lot you really need to be seeing besides 15 feet in front of you. Um, so a nice light headlamp will do the trick nicely. Sun protection is also really important. Uh, just make sure you're not getting burned. Uh, the south side especially just bakes as soon as the sun comes up. Um, so I have SPF lip balm and a little stick of 
SPF 50 uh, sunscreen. You can also get the little tubes, I think they're easier. If you screw these ones up, you get tan lines that have right angles. Uh, I have done that before. And then eye protection. Um, so I generally bring one or both of these. These are my Jolbo glacier glasses. They're nice and super light, uh, do a really good job for most things. Uh, when the glacier glasses are not sufficient is generally going to be storms and high wind and fun stuff like that. And then a good pair of ski goggles is going to be make your life a lot better. Um, they're just way more protective. So this is something I'll bring in winter and or if I'm skiing. And then with those uh, little thing of cat crap, just make sure that you're not fogging up so you can still see things while you're going uphill because that's always nice. We have some more electronics. Uh, so I bring just a little battery pack. Uh, this is good for keeping my phone topped up because a very important piece of gear that I didn't mention is the phone because this is how I'm doing most of my navigation. Uh, I have CalTopo downloaded on the phone. I can check my GPS location just on here. And it works super, super well. Uh, I bring the battery pack if I'm at all worried about my phone battery dying because batteries don't last as long when it's cold out. So having something to be able to top it up when I'm relying on my phone for navigation is awesome. I also like to bring my Garmin uh, watch. So the nice thing with this one is it both tracks my elevation, which is really helpful for navigating because, for example, I know the top of Palmer is at 8,500 feet. Um, so if I'm at 8,500 feet and not at the top of a chairlift, I know I'm not in the right spot. I can also, because it's a fancy Garmin, uh, I can pull up maps and navigate just on this thing, though it's a pain and I don't like to do it, but it's a nice backup to have. Moving on to the layering system of what I'll have in my pack, I'm not gonna talk about my whole layering system. Um, generally for climbing Mount Hood, I'll have somewhere between two and three pairs of gloves, depending on the temperature and route I'm doing. Um, so I like to have a lighter weight uphill glove. These are from camp. I couldn't find the second one this morning, uh, but it's got a thin uninsulated glove on the inside and then insulated over mitt. So you can change your the amount of warmth you have on the fly. So it makes it really versatile, easy to use. Uh, when it gets to the climbing section, I have a pair of the Showa Temrez gloves. Uh, they're nice, super durable, super cheap, like 20 bucks. Um, they work really well. And most importantly, they have a nice, fairly tight fit. Um, so you can actually climb some decently steep stuff with these guys. And then finally, all of my real warm gloves for cold days, especially if I uh, have to stop to belay or something like that, is these are the Black Diamond Guide gloves, just super warm. They don't have as much dexterity, which is why having a thinner glove uh, is really important. Also have Baba for when it's cold out i.e. winter. All right, moving on. Last thing I'll generally have in my pack that I don't start off wearing is my puffy. Um, so ideally I like to start off with relatively few layers, uh, something that I know I'll be comfortable with while moving uphill. Um, and then nice, like having a nice warm puffy that I can throw on when I stop to stay warm or if it gets real cold by the summit. I brought two here on an actual climb. I'm only really ever gonna bring one, unless it's an overnight, but that's a whole other story. Um, this guy is my extra thick puffy from Rab. Uh, it comes in winter when it's real cold and I need an actual puffy. Next up, I also have a Rab puffy. This one's a synthetic, it's a lighter weight material. Uh, so this is what I'll generally carry in spring or summer. All right, finally, one of the food and water uh, for food. Cliff blocks. I like the what color is this? black cherry because it's got a bunch of caffeine. So if you want to really get going, eat a whole one of these and you will be zipping up the hill. I also like trail butters because it's a nice kind of easy snack. You squeeze them into your mouth, or at least that's how I eat it. Some people put on uh, tortillas if you're so inclined. Um, chai flavor is the best, but there's like uh, between seven and 800 calories in this thing. So it's a nice dense sorts of calories. Uh, water is, I tend to bring only a liter of water, which is probably not a lot to most of you. Um, I do that because I make sure to drink a liter of water before I start and have essentially a gallon of water in the car when I finish. Um, and water is heavy, so I don't like carrying that much. 
I will change that if it's later in the season or real hot out, I'll bring more. And I use these nice platypus bottles because they're super lightweight, packed down to nothing once they're empty. Um, I've yet to pop one, but keep away from your crampons. Last up, we've got the backpack. Um, so this is my go-to pack for uh, single day missions. Uh, it's a ultimate direction, 30 liter pack. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything, any Alpine pack from like 30 to 40 liters will do a good job. Uh, just need to make sure it fits all your gear. We have a, at the shop here, we have a number of options from Osprey, Black Diamond, and Blue Ice. That would all do a great job. And Hyperlite Mountain Gear. There you go, Alpine pack. The big thing is just make sure you have a pack that's big enough to fit everything you need. Uh, so generally, if you're starting out, you can err on the big side. Like a good 40 liter pack will be really versatile and serve you well for years to come. Uh, one additional thing I want to mention about using ropes to climb Mount Hood is if you're using a rope as protection for steep snow, uh, you need to be placing protection if you're just walking and, you know, it's just vibes. Uh, if one person falls, they can pull off everyone else, and there's been numerous uh, incidents caused when one person rope team falls and drags the whole team with them. So whether or not you choose to use a rope on Mount Hood is... A decision that's up to you uh, but if you are going to use one make sure you're using protection well that's what's in my packs climb mount hood uh thank you for tuning in let us know if there's anything uh you'd like to us to make a video on next